Welcome to this video. Now, in this video, we're going to speak about curating scope. So, essentially, scope is really important in executing curating. So, what is a scope? Curating scope is essentially a life cycle boundary for curatings. It defines where and when it should be started and cancelled. So, it's going to determine where and how curatings run and when they should be cancelled. So, it helps manage the life cycle of a curating so that it can be started and cancelled in a structured way. So we have a concept in Kotlin Curatin that is called structured concurrency. Basically, we have 10 curatins that are running, but they are running under one scope. So we can use that scope actually to cancel or execute them in a structured way and a controlled environment. Let's look here at a simple example explaining this concept. So let's assume here somebody has gone to a restaurant and is ordering. So basically, here we have a curatin scope that is going to be started. Now, because the order is placed, now the chef is going to start to cook. Now a new curatin is going to be started and executed under the same scope. Now after the chef uh, finishes to cook, now it's going to go to the customer and the customer is going to serve the food and actually another curatin is executed. Now after this, the curatin is going to either go to the cancel or is going to be inside a completed state. Now our scope is actually uh, completed and here you can see we have executed two curatins inside the same scope. So this is a structured concurrency inside Kotlin curatins. So there are several curatin scopes that are available and we'll discuss them in more detail. Okay, so the first one here we have is a global scope. And you have seen the global scope if you have watched previous videos where we have used this. So the global scope as the name suggests is basically globally inside our application context. So basically this one is going to be running as long as our application is marked. And you can see here the global scope is actually marked with a delicate API, which is generally not recommended to use. So global scope works in the background without any provision to cancel it or to wait for its completion. So if the network is slow, it keeps waiting in the background consuming resources. Here due to this, it is easy to accidentally create resource or memory leaks. For this case because if anything else is going to happen here then this is going to consume resource now assume here we are just performing a simple function but let's say we are performing here heavy computations then this one is going to drain the battery or it's going to wait for the network and then it's no longer needed to actually use it so the global scope is actually not recommended to use so there are better approaches to actually use this and the main use case here is for example when you want to fetch for example configuration from the server which are actually supposed to be fetching inside the application as not as uh, tied in a certain life cycle for example the life cycle of an activity or a life cycle of a view model so basically we can use a global scope to fetch this or for example if we want to log this and send the data to the server then we can create using a global scope but also there are better approaches rather than using a global scope which we're going to iterate and see how the other scopes are going to be essentially important when we want to execute our curatins Another scopes which we have that are generally available inside Android is called a life cycle scope. So a life cycle scope, as the name suggests, this one is going to be tied to the life cycle of that particular activity. Basically, whenever this activity is going to be cancelled, then this scope also is going to be cancelled. So you can easily execute this, for example, we inside here, and we can call here our life cycle. Sorry, we have to call here the life cycle scope launch and you can see we have a curating builder that we can use to actually execute this and here you can see we have a curating scope that we can use it so for example here we want to specifically execute whenever the state is inside a resumed state so for example we can just call here repeat on life cycle now we can specify what type of life cycle that we want to actually execute here for example we want this whenever it's inside the resumed state then here we can call update UI and actually execute a suspend function inside here. So when the curatin actually launches with the lifecycle scope, then the life of the curatin ties with the lifecycle of the activity or the fragment that is going to be attached to it. It means when the activity or the fragment is going to be destroyed, then the curatin also is going to be cancelled. So this applies mostly when you are using traditional UI, like observing live data, collecting state, but Jepa Compose offers other tools to manage the UI and the lifecycle aware by default. So for example, if you're using here XML views and you want to collect or observe, for example, the 
the live data, then you can use this life cycle scope and actually collect, uh, for example, or observe the live data whenever you are inside a resumed state. And if it is stopped, then there is no use case for that collecting the or updating the UI when the user is actually navigating off our screen. So for this case, we can call this function here and use this repeat uh, lifecycle state and actually change the UI. So another type of scope that is available in Android is actually the view model. So basically here you can see we have a simple uh, code here. We have a view model that is going to have a dependency from the repository. And when you look here at our repository, it has a function that is going to mimic fetching data from a network. So we are delaying here, then we are emitting here a simple result that is going to be sent back to the view model. Now here we can use different type of scope that is called the view model scope, which is actually tied to the life cycle of a view model. So for example, let's execute here our function. So it is useful for launching coroutines in the view model that should survive actually configuration changes like screen rotation, but be cancelled when the view model is actually cleared. So when the user is going to actually leave the screen permanently, then we can cancel this particular uh, view model scope. So we can use this scope for tasks like fetching data or managing UI state that should be uh, persisted across configuration changes, but stop when the user actually navigate away from the screen. So for this case here, you can see we are just fetching here our data. Now collecting a flow is actually a suspend function. So we have to use a launch here and create a new coroutine. So we actually launch a new coroutine. Then we can perform here updating our state. You can see we are updating here our state. So we are doing here two uh, type of uh, suspend function. So the first suspend here, which is just fetching the data. So we are going to suspend this until the data is going to be fetched. Then we can use this to actually perform a collecting of this data, which is another suspend function that we're going to execute. So this is just the view model score. And the greatest part here, we can easily switch to different threads here. And by default, this one is going to actually inherit the thread or the dispatcher that is coming with the view model scope, which is actually the main dot immediate. If you want to change here, for example, I uh, want to change it to a different dispatcher, then you can pass in here the dispatcher and pass in dispatcher.io. But this is not a good practice of changing the dispatcher or passing it directly here. So if you want to pass the dispatchers, then you can easily inject them to a class. So if you are inside the test cases, you don't have to use this particular dispatchers. You can use unconfined dispatcher or a test dispatcher that can directly be used inside here. So this is example of how the view model scope is actually used. So you have seen here we have a view model scope and a life cycle scope that is actually tied to the activity and the view model scope is tied to uh, the, the view model life cycle. So what if we have some actions that are really important and are supposed to be executed? beyond the view model scope or the life cycle scope. So how can we do this? So for example, let's go inside here repository. Okay, now let's assume inside here we have a function that is called perform action. So we are doing some action. Then we have this other action that is supposed to be very important and not actually canceled whenever the view model or the life cycle scope are going to be canceled. So we have here these suspend functions which are going to be executed. Now, when we are going directly here and use the view model scope to actually execute this or use the life cycle scope, then this a very important action is going to be actually canceled and then we are going to lose our data. So here we have to use a custom scope that is going to help us to actually perform this. So we can create our custom scope that is going to be actually run. Or you can say, hey, we can use a global scope. But the global scope here, we don't have a fine grained control on how it's going to be executed. So for this case, it's easier to perform memory leaks and other things by using a global scope. That's why it's really important. We can just specify, for example, a custom scope that can help us do this. So let's try here, for example, to create our own custom scope. And this one is going to be called the application scope. So we can tie this scope directly inside our application. Now let's call this my application. So this one is going to inherit from the application class. Okay, so now here we can define our application. So let's call this application. Now to specify a custom scope, we can actually specify the coroutine. So you can say the coroutine scope here. But here we have to specify the coroutine context. So if you don't know about the coroutine context, 
you can watch the previous video where I'm speaking about launches and dispatches. So basically here, a context is going to define the behavior of our application here or our scope. So for this case, we can say, hey, we want you whenever you are performing something, then you use this. So for example, we can specify a job. So we know a job is actually used to as a handle to control the life cycle of that particular coroutine. Then we can specify, for example, this is scope to use which type of dispatchers. So by default, it's going to use that default dispatchers if you don't specify. So you can specify a dispatcher by concatenating it. So for example, here we can say we want this to be dispatcher.io. And if you want to change the dispatcher, then whenever you're launching, you can change the dispatcher directly there. Or you can use a function that is called with context to actually change the dispatcher. Okay, so here we have specified our curating context. So this job here also is going to define a relationship on how to actually control this. So we are going to see when we are going to speak about cancellations about the role of this particular job here. Okay, so we can inject the job here inside our repository. And actually we have to do this inside here. So let's just create here our injection. So we can create private function, uh, private variable. Let's call this external scope, which is of type uh, curatin. Okay, so we are injecting here this curatin scope here is because we want whenever we are testing here, we can easily substitute with different scope rather than depending on that particular scope which we have created. So now we can use here our custom scope to actually launch this. So for example, here do very important action. Now we can use our external scope and actually launch this and perform here. So you can see we are creating a new curatin here. So this is going to run to the curatin other than our curatin that is going to do very important action. Now we can go back here and for example, we can execute here, do some action. So let's create another init block and we can call here a repository dot perform action. But you can see this is a suspend function. So we have to launch this so we can use our view model scope and actually perform. So basically this one action here is going to be executed with this particular scope. But here we have external scope that we want to execute this very important action to survive beyond view model scope. Now for starters, you may be wondering how can I pass now this particular scope here? So it's easier, you can easily create here a, so for example, if you're using hilt, then this one is going to be easier for you. So you can easily inject using hilt. But if not, then you can do manual injection. Now, let me show you here an example on how I can do this. So here, I'm going to create a class that is going to be the view model factory. So we can call this my view model factory. Then here we can pass in the application scope. It's going to be of type curating scope. Now we can use the view model provider factory now we can override the create method so here we can return my view model and actually pass in here the repository and we can easily construct here our repository directly now we have to pass in the application scope and here we can pass it as t okay so here we have this we can just suppress this error Okay, so we are creating here a factory that is going to help us to pass in this scope whenever we are creating that particular view model. So for this case, you can just go back to the main activity here. So inside here, we can actually obtain that application scope. And we can use my application. And actually now we have the application scope available here. Now we can construct our view model. So you can construct the view model using the factory. So you can use the compose function or you can use it normally with different cases. So for example, here we can use. And here we want to construct my view model. And inside here we can pass in the factory because we have created a factory that is going to help us to construct this. Then here we can construct now by using my view model. Factory. And inside here now we can pass in the application scope. So let's pass in here our application scope. So now we have our view model 
then if we have a screen that requires that view model then we can use that view model inside here so that's how you use the custom scope and create a custom scope and use it so you can construct this custom scope where you don't need to use the life cycle scope or you don't want to use for example the uh, view model scope and this case is going to help you i've learned different types of scopes and the role of the scope so creating scope defines the life cycle of coroutines and controls their cancellation so it ensures coroutines are structured avoiding leaks and merging the life cycle properly the scope can be tied to different contexts. So we have the global scope for long running application wide coroutines. Use with caution this one. Then we have the coroutine scope or the custom scope for specific use cases or UI components. And we have another case is the view model scope. So coroutines tied to the view model life cycle. So this one is going to be tied to the view model scope. Then we have the life cycle scope. The coroutines tied to Android lifecycle components like activities and fragments. So scopes helps manage when coroutines start and stop and ensuring proper cleanup. So that's it for this video. Let's leave it here. So if you find any valuable information in this video, please don't forget to provide a like, comment, and subscribe. So see you in the next video. And in the next video, we are going to talk about jobs and cancellation. So for now, let's leave it here. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.